Some of you are sitting here this morning, and maybe for me, and, and it, I, I, you know, I can misjudge things, of course, misread things, but some of you, the look on your face is maybe that you're not totally sure of that. You're not totally convinced of that. And I just want to assure you this morning that God loves you, and God loves you deeply. No matter what you've done, no matter what your past, no matter how you may have failed, there's a God who loves you deeply. You may have fallen in some way, but can I assure you that God loves you deeply. God loves you very, very much. Luke chapter 22. I want to share with you something that uh, spoke to my heart as I was doing my devotions and going through the Gospels here recently. Just going to mention something to begin with there out of verses 24 to 27, and then we'll really get into what is, is really the main thought for the message. Luke chapter 22, if we can turn there together. Luke chapter 22. And if you're physically able to do so, let's just stand together for the reading of God's Word, and we'll read just these few scriptures to begin with. Luke chapter 22. And verses 24 to 27. Luke chapter 22 and verses 24 to 27. The Bible says there beginning in verse 24. And there was also a strife among them. Which of them should be accounted the greatest? And he said unto them, The kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them. And they that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors. But ye shall not be so. But he that is greatest among you... Let him be as the younger, and he that is chief, as he that doth, what's that next word? Serve. As he that doth serve. For whether is greater, he that sitteth at meat, or he that serveth, is not he that sitteth at meat? But I am among you, Jesus said. I am among you as he that serveth. Jesus taught us by his example to be a servant. And Jesus taught us that the greatest is to serve. Let's bow our heads. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, would you speak to our hearts this morning? Would you encourage us? I pray, Lord, too, that you'd help us to have the heart of a servant, to serve like Christ did. And then, Lord, encourage us with the truth this morning that you've laid on my heart. May it be a blessing to others as well. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. You can be seated. Jesus, our example, teaches us in those verses to serve. Think about it. Jesus Christ, Lord of the universe, King of kings, Son of God. But what was he? He was a servant. He taught us by his example to serve. He washed his disciples' feet. God wants you and I certainly as well to be servants. And to serve one another... God wants us in our homes, not just always looking to be served, but to serve. Well, my wife, she should serve me. My husband, he should serve me. Well, well maybe he should. Maybe she should. But God wants you and me to look to serve. Well, you have a heart to serve your spouse, to serve your family, to serve your children, to serve your parents. We ought to have a heart to serve one another. In so doing, what happens? We become more like Christ. Jesus Christ was the greatest, but he was a servant. And by his example, he teaches us to serve. He, 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 he doesn't teach us to be a teenager that, Hey, Mom, do this! Dad, do this! Not demanding, not bossy, not arrogant, not, not always expecting other people to do things for you, but you learning to serve. Wouldn't that be great, parents, if our teenagers would look to serve? They weren't always just waiting with hands for handouts. <laughs> hey, mom, dad, I need money. Or mom, dad, I need this. Or hey, mom, do this. When's supper going to be ready? Well, maybe supper could have been ready earlier if you would have done some chores. <laughs> if you would have served. If you would have helped. <laughs> You would have been a blessing. Amen. So God teaches us, Jesus teaches us to serve. We're to serve. Let's read on there. Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. 
And let's go to verse number uh, 28. We'll start, start in verse 28 and read down. The Bible says in verse 28, Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations, and testing, suffering, trials, so on. He says, And I appoint unto you a kingdom, as my Father hath appointed unto me, that ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and sit on the thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Notice this, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, and this is, this is Simon Peter, one of the apostles, Simon Peter we call him, the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. You know, Satan's after you. Satan's after me. Satan's after our families. Satan would love to destroy your family. Satan would love to destroy your home. Satan would love to keep you from being the Christian that, that God wants you to be. He's after you just like he was after Simon Peter, one of the apostles. And the Lord Jesus says to him, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as we notice this. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted... Strengthen thy brethren. And he said unto him, Lord, I, I'm ready to go with thee, both into prison and to death. If you know Peter, he very oftentimes would, would speak up very boldly for Christ. And he, he said, I'm with you, Christ. I'll suffer with you. I'll die with you. I'd do anything for you, Jesus. I would never deny you. I would die for your sake. I love you, Jesus. I love you. And he did. He loved Jesus tremendously. I, I don't know if any one of us could say we have the same passion and love for Jesus, the Lord Jesus, that Peter did. He loved him deeply. He loved him sincerely. There was nothing wrong about his love for the Lord. But notice what it says. In verse 34, Jesus speaks back to Simon Peter now and says this. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock, the, the rooster, shall not crow this day before that thou shalt thrice, three times, deny that thou knowest me. Peter says, I'd suffer for you, I'd die for you, I'd do anything for you. And Jesus says, Simon, Peter... Before the rooster crows the next morning, you're going to end up denying me three times. Notice verse 35. And he said unto them, When I sent you without, without purse, without money and scrip and shoes, lacked ye anything? And they said, Nothing. Then he said unto them, But now he that hath a purse, let him take it, and likewise his scrip. And he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. For I say unto you that this uh, that is written must yet be accomplished. And he was reckoned among the transgressors for the things concerning me have an end. And he's speaking there about Judas in those verses. Things that Judas would do to betray Jesus. Or 30 pieces of silver. Look down to... Um, Look down to verse uh, 47. Peter has, or sorry, Jesus now rather has gone with his apostles. He's in the Garden of Gethsemane. He's praying there on the Mount of Olives. says verse 47 and while he yet spake he was speaking to his disciples behold the multitude and he that was called Judas one of the twelve went before them and drew near unto Jesus to kiss him and Jesus said unto him but Judas betrayest thou the son of man with a kiss when they that were about him saw what would follow they said unto him Lord shall we smite with the sword probably it was Peter too speaking up Jesus sh sh should we smite these soldiers with the sword we're, we're not going to let them take you 
verse 50, And one of them, we know it was Peter, smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. And Jesus answered and said, Suffer ye thus far. And he touched his ear and healed him. And Jesus said unto the chief priests and captains of the temple and the elders which were come to him, But ye come out as against, be ye come out as, a th th as against a thief with swords and staves? When I was daily with you in the temple, ye stretched forth no hands against me, but this is your hour in the power of darkness. Then they took him and led him and brought him to the high priest's house. Notice this. And Peter followed afar off. In some moments, you know, Peter is standing there boldly and he's speaking for Christ and saying, I'll suffer for you, I'll, I'll die for you. He's, he's pulling out his sword and, shall I smite these soldiers? <laughs> he cuts off his ear. And Jesus says, what are you doing? He heals him. Right? Jesus knew the plan was for him to go to Calvary, to be killed, to be crucified. And Peter was actually hindering the will of God from taking place. But after this, Jesus is being led away by the soldiers. And the Bible says that Peter follows afar off. Notice this, verse 55. And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall and were set down together, Peter sat down among them. But a certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire and earnestly looked upon him and said, This man was also with him. There's one of the ladies that looks and points at Peter and says, I know him. He's, he's one of those with Jesus. He's one of those disciples of Jesus. Verse 57, and he, Peter, denied him, saying, Woman, I know him not. I don't know him. He denies Jesus. Verse 58, and after a little while, another saw him and said, Thou art also of them. And Peter said, Man, I am not. I am not. And about the space of one hour after another, confidently affirmed, saying, Of a truth, this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. And Peter said, Man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately while he yet spake, the cock crew. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. And Peter remembered the words of the Lord, how he had said unto him before the cock crow, Thou shalt deny me thrice. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. Peter went out that day feeling like an absolute failure. Peter left that day in bitter tears, and because he had fallen, because he had denied the Lord three times, because he had done exactly what Jesus said he would, he felt, I'm a failure. I'm a flop. I'm worthless. I'm not much good. I don't know if Jesus will ever want to see me anymore. I'm not sure if I can ever do any much, uh, anything good or do much good for him. I'm a failure. I'm a failure. But that wasn't true. That wasn't true. He was not a failure. Again, look, look there at Luke 22. And go back to what it said in verse 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Jesus tells Simon, listen, Satan's after you. Satan wants you. He wants you to fall. He wants you to be defeated. He'd love to see you quit and give up and, and stop following me. He, he'd love to wreck and ruin your life. He'd love to keep you from being used of the Lord and having the blessings of the Lord in your life one day. He'd love to keep you from all of that. Satan was after him. And Jesus was really warning Peter that in a moment of temptation, he, he would actually deny the Lord. Satan would tempt him to deny the Lord. Satan would tempt him to be silent and to shut up and to be quiet and to not stand up with Jesus in that moment there. Peter would. He would fall to that temptation. He would fall to that temptation to say nothing for Jesus, to not speak up at all. He ended up denying, I don't know him. I don't know him. I don't know him. Bible says in another gospel, right? He, he cursed and 
He swore an oath. He cursed. So I don't know him. May I say that Peter did fall to that temptation. Satan was after him. Satan would have loved to keep Peter from all that God wanted to do in his life. You know, the Bible tells us over in uh, 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse number 8 that uh, we have an adversary. We have an enemy that walketh about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And that enemy is Satan. That enemy is the devil. And may I say, he's after you as well. He'd love for you to fall. He'd love for you to quit. He'd love for you to stop living for Christ. Just as he had a cause and had a part in Peter's denying the Lord and falling into that temptation and doing wrong. But I want you to notice again, Luke twenty two thirty two. 32. I love the words of Jesus in this verse, because notice what he said. He said, Simon, Simon, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But notice this. Jesus says to Peter, but I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. Jesus, God, speaks to Peter and says, but I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. Peter, Peter, I, I know that Satan's after you and he's going to bring temptations into your way because he wants you to fall and he wants you to quit and he wants to wreck your life and he's going to bring temptations to you. Simon Peter loved the Lord deeply and he did fall to that temptation. But may I say, he did not fail. He did not fail. Jesus says to him, I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Jesus says to Peter, Peter, I'm praying for you. What are you praying for? I'm praying that your faith fail not. That your faith fail not. I want you to remember something if you remember nothing else this morning. Falling does not make you a failure. Falling does not make you a failure. Falling does not make you a failure. Can you say that with me? Falling does not make you a failure. Say it again. Falling does not make you a failure. Say it again. Falling does not make you a failure. If Jesus, Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, God himself in the flesh, was praying for Peter's faith not to fail, then I don't think Peter did fail. I think Jesus would have power in prayer to get what he wanted, don't you think? And listen, Jesus didn't fail in his prayers. Peter's faith did not fail. He may have fallen, but he did not fail. He did not fail. Peter fell. Yes, he fell. He was tempted by Satan, and he did not deny the Lord, but he did not fail. Peter fell, but he did not fail. He fell, but he did not fail. You know, the Bible says that the just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. You may fall sometimes, but if you get back up and you keep on going for the Lord and you get right with Him and you get His forgiveness in your life, you can go on for the Lord and you can be forgiven of the Lord and you can be blessed of the Lord in your life. We may fall, but that doesn't make us a failure. Get back up. Get back up. Maybe you've fallen. Maybe you fall to temptation sometime, but get back up and keep on going. Get back up and get right with the Lord and get His forgiveness in your life. Turn to Him. Listen, you're not a failure. We all fall to Satan's temptation sometimes. But we only fail if we don't get back up later 
and repent and turn unto the Lord. All of us will fall sometimes. You say, uh, it doesn't matter if you've been a Christian for decades or a Christian for a few months. You'll fall sometimes. Because Satan doesn't like you living the Christian life. He doesn't like you being excited for the Lord Jesus Christ. He, he doesn't like you caring about others who are lost and wanting to get the gospel to them. Uh, he, he doesn't like you uh, praying. He doesn't like you going to church. He doesn't like you making Jesus a priority in your life. He doesn't like any of that. And he'd love to see you fall. He'd love to see you fail. He'd love to see you quit. He'd love to see you turn away from the Lord. But you don't have to. And God doesn't want you to. And if Jesus was praying for Peter, maybe Jesus is praying for you too. That your faith would fail not. That your faith would fail. Jesus knows you're going to fall sometimes. But he could be praying for you that your faith would fail not. We'll all fall to Satan's temptation sometimes. But we only fail if we don't get back up later and repent and turn unto the Lord. You know, Jesus said there to Peter in verse uh, 32. He said, when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. When thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. The Greek word translated converted there was a word that really implied the thought of, of, of repentance and turning back to God. Or returning to Him. Jesus says, Peter, when you're converted, when you, after you fall, when you, after you sin, when you, after you've denied me three times, when you've, after you've fallen, but you'll turn back to me, you'll return unto me, you'll come back to me, you're going to be used of God. You're going to be forgiven. You're going to be used of the Lord. You're going to be blessed of the Lord. You're actually going to strengthen your brethren. Just a short time later, you're going to be used in the book of Acts to, to preach on the day of Pentecost that thousands of people would get saved, that they would believe in Jesus as the Messiah. They would be saved. Listen, Jesus wasn't done with Peter just because he had fallen. God wasn't through with Peter just because he had fallen. Falling does not make you a failure. Falling does not make you a failure. May I say that God can, and God will. God can, and God wants to. God can, and God wants to still use us, even after we fall. You think about Peter's life, and you think about times that he denied the Lord. You think about times that Jesus questioned him, and he, he seemingly had the wrong answers. He said the wrong things. He didn't understand everything. That's all right. Jesus wasn't done with him. Jesus wasn't through with him. Jesus was praying for him all the while that his faith would fail not. And that after he was converted, he would be used mightily. You and I fall. But you need to just return unto the Lord, get right with the Lord. And go on for the Lord. We'll turn back with me to Psalm chapter 51, if you would. Psalm chapter 51. There's another man in the Bible who loved God with all his heart. I would say he loved God with all of his heart. I think that, that's fair to say. The Bible says about David that he was a man after God's own heart. He loved what God loved. He hated what God hated. But in a moment of temptation, David fell. David fell. David sinned. David did wrong. But he was converted. He repented. He returned unto God. He got right with the Lord. He sinned greatly. He sinned with Bathsheba. We may talk about it sometime. But he got right with the Lord. He got right with the Lord. And his life was still blessed afterwards. And his life was still used. Oh, there were some consequences to his sin and all of that. But the Lord still loved him. Notice what it says in Psalm chapter 51 when 
David is converted and David is returning unto the Lord. Psalm 51, David cries out and he says, Have mercy upon me, O God, according unto thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me throughly, wash me, wash me all the way through. Wash me throughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. If you won't acknowledge your transgressions, you're, 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 you're not going to be converted. You just deny or try to hide or you won't be honest with yourself or honest with God. You won't be converted. Listen, you've got to be honest with yourself and honest with God about your sin. And yes, I've fallen. But thank God that with Him, there's forgiveness. And there's mercy. And there's abundant pardon. Return unto Him. He'll not cast you away. The Bible says in verse 4, King David says, Against thee, thee only, have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that, thou, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me, notice this, Verse 10, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy way, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praises. You know what, what abundant blessing and praise and glory and honor it can bring to God when we do repent and get right with Him when we have fallen? The psalmist David talks some about it there. You know, oh, how his tongue, oh, how his mouth is then going to give such praise and such glory to the Lord because the Lord does reach down. Even when we're, you know, a fallen Christian or we've sinned or we've done wrong, he does reach down and he's willing to restore us. He's willing to welcome us back just like the prodigal son. I thank God that when we fall, it does not make us a failure. It does not make us a failure. It says there in Psalm 51, 17, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. O oh God, thou wilt not despise. If you will have a broken and contrite heart, if you'll run back to God, if you'll return unto Jesus, be converted, repent, turn to Him. You may have sinned, you may have fallen, but it doesn't make you a failure. You may have done some things that you wish you did not have done, and you've got regrets about it, but it does not make you a failure. God wants to forgive you. Jesus has likely been praying for you like He prayed for, for, for Peter. That your faith would fail not. You don't have to fail in your faith. You don't have to fail in the Christian life. Oh, you may fall. Yes, we'll all fall lots of times. That doesn't make you a failure. Get back up. Return to Him. Run to Him. Get right with Him. God can still use you. Just like God and Jesus was looking for Peter. Uh, in later, in, in another place in the Gospels, he, he tells some of the ladies that saw him after, he, after Jesus was resurrected. He tells some of the, later, uh, the ladies there. He says, go, you know, go tell the disciples and Peter. <laughs> he mentions Peter specifically by name. He must knew that Peter was still off somewhere and he was having a pity party and he was all down and discouraged because, oh, I'm such a failure. I'm such a failure. No, you've fallen, but you're not a failure yet. Jesus loved him. God loves you. You may have fallen, but it does not make you a failure. Today, run to the Lord. Get right with the Lord. Return unto him. 
He, he will pardon you. He'll forgive you. He can use you like he used Peter. Always remember that falling does not make you a failure. Say it this way. Falling does not make me a failure. Falling does not make me a failure. Let's say it together. Falling does not make me a failure. Falling does not make me a failure. Say it again. Falling does not make me a failure. Say it again. Falling does not make me a failure. You're not a failure if you've fallen. You'll fail if you quit. You'll fail if you never return unto the Lord. You, you, you may miss out on blessings that God could have had for your life and being used to the Lord and understanding the gloriousness of His grace and forgiveness to restore you to a wonderful fellowship with Him. Listen, you fall, it does not make you a failure. It does not make you a failure. Get back up, run to Him. And let the Lord show you His great grace and mercy, long-suffering patience in your life. Be converted. And after you're converted, you could strengthen your brethren. After you're converted, you could strengthen your brethren with the wonderful testimony of what God did to lift you up in a time when you were fallen and bring you to a place where now your life is glorifying Him and praising Him and God's using you. Be converted. You don't have to fail in your faith even if you've fallen. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I pray that you'd use this simple truth to encourage our hearts. Lord, a little while ago, I thought that I would speak about something else, but Lord, you put it clearly on my heart that you wanted me to share this. And Lord, I believe you intended it for people in this room this morning even including me. God, I know I've fallen many times, but I thank you that you've always been there for me when I get back up and run to you. I thank you for the great forgiveness and mercy that there is with you. An abundance of pardon. Lord Peter was obviously not perfect. He was a sinful man. And he fell to temptation just as Jesus predicted he would. But I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you cared enough about him, that you were praying for him, that his faith would not fail. And Lord, we know the story that he, he fell, but he, he did not become a failure. He got back up again. He returned unto you. He was converted. He did strengthen his brethren. He did get used mightily of you. He had your power on his life. He experienced great blessing in his life. And Lord, may that be true of our lives as well. Help us to seek you. Even if we've drifted away from you, help us to seek you, to return unto you, to run unto you. Lord, help us to be honest with you like David had to be about the sin in his life. And help us, Lord, if it's necessary for us as a believer to repent of that sin and get right with you, help us to do that. So we can walk in closeness of fellowship with you, so we can have your blessings and your power. Help us, Lord, I pray. I'm going to ask the pianist to play a song there. and Just with our heads bowed and our eyes closed, would you just maybe take another moment in prayer? Maybe there's something you need to thank the Lord for. something you need to confess to the Lord? When you return unto the Lord and you run back to Him, He's always
always standing there with arms wide open. so much for your goodness and grace in our lives. Thank you for loving us so deeply. We see your love for us really in the love that Jesus expressed to Peter. Lord Jesus, we know that you were praying for Peter. You weren't going to give up on him. Even though you predicted he'd fall, you knew he did not have to fail in his faith. And Lord, help us to realize that we are, do not have to be failures as well, even when we fall. Thank you, Lord, for that. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.